Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. Just wanted to show you the new Benchtop 2KV MOT power supply that I have just finished building. Um, I've got a couple of other things to show you as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. We will have a look at this one in a bit more detail and fire it up and get some arcing happening um, and then we'll go from there. So very quickly on the face panel because it's fairly simple, we've got the on and off switch and also a momentary on switch for short pulse operations. We've got a couple of um, high voltage magnetron feed throughs here. The top set of feed throughs go to a microwave oven capacitor. The bottom set go to the high voltage positive and high voltage negative. Um, so that serves as the output for the transformer for the power supply. Take the hood off. We will have a look inside. Um, so on this side, we'll start from the back actually. The only thing that we've got on the back is this IEC plug and a couple of banana plug inputs. And that goes straight out to the board through these two switches here, which are the ones that we looked at on the face panel. Uh, you can see everything's insulated with uh, PVC tubing. We've got the cardboard stuff on the sides where the wires are in contact or near to the earth potential. Um, so the input of this transformer is here and the output side goes straight through. I'll show you here through that black PVC tube, through that black rubber grommet, over to the other side and into the high voltage output terminal. Um, the one that's closest to us is the negative, that's the red lead, red PVC tube, and you can see that that is just earthed straight to the case. Um, and then at the top here we have the black leads which go straight to the microwave oven capacitor. It's fairly simple. Uh, the earthing on the primary side, uh, this board here, as you can see, is earthed straight to the transformer casing which is screwed to the chassis. Uh, so it's all fairly well earthed. And the earthing on the IEC plug goes straight to the casing on the other side of the transformer. Uh, so everything's earthed to the case and there we have it, that is pretty much the complete power supply. The only modifications that, that I've got to do now is actually finish wiring this up because these banana plugs are actually not connected to anything. I've got to wire them in. Um, I do want to build a little harness for this um, high voltage capacitor and the other thing I want to do is put a keyed switch in here um, just as a safety feature just in case someone that shouldn't be playing with it decides to plug it in and electrocute themselves. Um, so I do plan on keeping all of my high voltage power supplies in a lockable cupboard but where I can I will put keyed access or keyed switches um, in the face panels and incorporate those as another safety device. Uh, so without further ado let's get some arcing happening. This is what it looks like through a welding screen.
Okay, so that's my new MOT power supply. Um, now, while we're on that subject of high voltage power supplies, I will show you another power supply that I've just purchased, which is a 9 kV neon sign transformer. Um, I bought this one because I didn't have something in the 9 to 10,000 volt range. Um, the reason I've cho chosen this one is because it is a one of the digital ones, so it operates on a 24 kilohertz frequency, um, and it's a 9,000 volt unit, which is what I wanted. Um, the other important part of this choice of transformer was the fact that it has an external earth point here, so we can actually use this to do a Don Smith replication. Um, in his device, the one that I mentioned in my previous Don Smith video, um, he actually mentions on that device that it must be a high frequency digital neon sign transformer and it must have this external earth point and that without that external earth coming out of the casing um, it's highly likely that it will not work properly. So we've got the right transformer there to do a Don Smith replication. Uh, we've got the right transformer here to do a John Louis Norden um, Capogen replication. Um, the only other power supply that I need now in the high voltage range are a couple of 25,000 volt 1 milliamp uh, power supplies which I am currently negotiating. Um, the guy's away at the moment so it might be a while but yeah I'm hoping to get two of those. Um, and then I'll have pretty much every power supply that I'll need to do my initial range of experiments. Uh, the other thing that I did get is this power supply here, which is actually not a power supply as such, but it is a 19 inch rack mount PA amplifier. Um, it's a dual channel amplifier and it has a 100 volt 4 ohm output. Um, this was just sitting in some guy's front yard and he was throwing it out. Um, powers on, works fine and I've got it mounted in my 19 inch rack mount case here. Um, so that'll come in handy for amplifying um, pulse signals and stuff into coils. Um, so yeah, so there you go. Throwing it out, couldn't believe it. So that'll come in handy. That's my daughter, you can hear there, whinging. Anyway, there you go. Power supplies, power supplies, power supplies. Oh, and I also picked up this um, multimeter, which is an old school multimeter here, but it works well, it's in good condition. Um, yeah, got nothing else for you. Thanks for watching. Um, we will be doing some experimenting soon. I am building that inverse magnetic field reactor. Um, I will be explaining that in more detail over the coming videos. Uh, until then, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and leave comments.